Yes, in this paper I would like to present a great find <coughs> from the bishopric of Odense in Denmark and indicate how a narrative might have been used in the political process in the late 11th century Denmark. In the first part of the 11th century, we know that a guy called Regenbert was the bishop in Odense. Regenbert was one among several Danish bishops appointed from Canterbury in England. Around 1045, 1044-1045, Hamburg Bremen's function as archdiocese for the church in Scandinavia was confirmed by Pope Benedict IX and his successors. But after 1060, the Danish king as well as the papacy started to display interest in the creation of an independent Nordic archdiocese, competent to select and insert the bishops in Denmark. This need accelerated from 1075 onwards and finally succeeded in 1104 when an archdiocese was established in Lund in Skania. <coughs> ah, okay. After the Danish king Canut was killed in 1086 in the church of South Arnban in, in Odense. A medieval writer proclaimed that St. Alban's church at that time was the bishop's church. This reference by an unknown chronicler has indicated that St. Alban's church functioned as a bishop's cathedral until 1095, when the king's body and St. Alban's relics were transferred 75 meters <coughs> to the newly built uh, St. Canute church. But until last year, there have been non-archaeological data which has been able to consolidate and deepen the various statements. St. Alban's church was finally torn down during the 16th century. But in the middle of what used to have been the 11th century central nave, we have found a special stone-built grave in the fall of 2015. Let's see the grave. In the grave lay a skeleton of a man who by legal anthropologists are determined to have been in his 50s at the time of death. The buried man was far from filling the grave, but despite of that, he was found pressed against the eastern end. This could be interpreted as to allow for a mitre, of which, however, we found no residual. By his right hand, we found a chalice and a pattern made of high-quality silver. It actually is silver. But, uh. <laughs> the chalice is a fine piece of metal craft, but besides some simple ornamental elements on the chalice cup and around the nodule, the chalice carries no decorations. The pattern <clears throat> has a diameter of 6.3 cm, and the rim shows two circles in between which an inscription with large Latin characters, while the center depicts a hand overlapping a cross. It is possible to approximate an art, an art historical dating, <clears throat> but we need to search outside Denmark to find good parallels. From the, north, from the northern part of Germany and France comes a group of relatively well-dated sets from 11th uh, and early 12th century grave, graves of archbishops. It is obvious to look for parallel within the Holy Roman Empire, as the Danish church, as mentioned, had close ties to northern Germany in the later part of the 11th century. Especially two patterns <coughs> from Bremen have great similarities with the one from Odense. One belonged to Archbishop Lima, who died in 1101, and an even closer parallel <coughs> is a pattern made during the second half of the, the second half of the 11th century or early 12th century, which is believed to have belonged to Archbishop Friedrich, who died in 1123. However, the chalice from the grave <coughs> of bishops in Bremen are not alike the chalice from Odense. In fact, the chalice from Odense stand out <coughs> as an archaic form 
known from several plots on chalices from Ottonian times. But the basic structure of the chalice from Uze shows striking similarities to Archbishop Gervasius of Rheims' chalice, and he died in 1067. The chalice and pattern from Uze <coughs> must be dated to the 11th century. And we have made a radiocarbon dating of the bone material to substantiate the art historic assessment. The analyzers have been associated with a number of challenges, as the bishop's skeleton is very degraded. Nevertheless, the radiocarbon results as well <coughs> indicates that the person originates from the 11th century. Combining the person's own age, the radiocarbon dating, and a cultural historical assessment of the grave makes it possible to narrow in the dating to the second half of the 11th century. Based on the character of the stone coffin, the grave's position within the church <coughs> and the chalice and patent with close parallels from 11th and 12th century bishop graves, there should be no doubt that the deceased was a bishop. But who? The burial must, be pre must predate 1095 when the construction of Canute's cathedral in Uinsa was so advanced that it was considered prudent to move King Canute's body <coughs> to its new resting place. After this time, the bishops of Uinsa were buried in St. Canute's church. The grave will also have to be assessed later than 1020, when we know the, <coughs> the name of the first 11th century bishop, Regenberg, whom Canute the Great invited to Uinsa from England. Besides Regenberg, <clears throat> who was bishop in the 1020s, and the English Benedictine monk Hubert, who served as bishop in Uinsa in 1101, we only know of one bishop, Albert. Albert was a cleric from Bremen, who was bishop from 1048 to 1072. Whether that really is Albert in the newfound grave, <clears throat> of course, can't be determined unambiguously. But the relation seems close to the Hamburg Bremen Archdiocese, based on the chalice and pattern as well as the radiocarbon dating. Sample material for DNA and strontium analyses have been collected to support the interpretation of the identifying question. We still haven't received the final reports on that subject, but it seems <clears throat> as if no strict conclusions can be drawn on that ground. It is, however, currently considered most likely that the bishop in the grave really is Albert, who was appointed from Hamburg Bremen. Albert is known from uh, Adam of Bremen's church history and from some quite interesting correspondences dealing with a severe controversy in the 1060s, which Bishop Albert had with Adalbert, the Archbishop of Hamburg Bremen, as well as the Pope himself. The finding of what is believed to be Albert's grave calls for an intriguing question. Why did the knowledge and memory of such a significant bishop <coughs> get lost already in the Middle Ages? And why wasn't the bishop's grave transferred into the new cathedral just two decades after his death? One can consider whether or not this neglect of Albert's grave reflected a deliberate and conscious political action originating out of a complex game of power and influence in Northern Europe. Leaving the bishop's grave in a building, which after 1095 was a secondary church in Uense, can be seen as consolidating a break in the narrative of the church. <clears throat> after having been closely related to the English church and the Archdiocese of Canterbury in the beginning of the 11th century, the supremacy of the Danish church was in 1044-1045 confirmed as part of the hamburg Bremen territory. A few years after, in 1048, Albert was appointed from hamburg Bremen and became bishop in Uense. Shortly after, the Danish king Sven Estresen <coughs> had, had uh, shortly after the Danish king Sven Estresen had reconstructed the Danish church institution in 1060, a controversy evolved between Albert in Uense and Adalbert of Hamburg Bremen. This conflict, which seemed to have been supported by the Danish bishops in general, developed during the 1060s and ultimately led Pope Alexander II 
to, to uh, prohibit the Danish king and his people to have any relation with Bishop Al <coughs> Albert. The reason being Albert's refusal to attend in the synod led by Erdelberg in Hamburg Bremen in three consecutive occasions. Bishop Albert died in 1072 and was, as suggested, buried in the Cathedral St. Alban's Church in Uense with a personal set of pattern and chalice, <clears throat> as it was custom at that time within the Hamburg Bremen Church. The conflict between Albert and the Archbishop of Hamburg Bremen, and in particular his neglect of the Pope's recommendations, is likely to have caused a burdened memory of Albert in Rome as well as in Hamburg Bremen. In 1075, only three years after Albert's death, an intense conflict evolved between the Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor and his German bishops. From that time on, a Danish neglect of Hamburg Bremen, as it had been conducted by Albert, was openly supported by the Pope as part of the ambition to establish an independent Nordic church completely detached from the archbishops <coughs> in Hamburg Bremen and, in the, <coughs> and the influence of the Holy Roman Emperor. In July 1086, the Danish King Canute was killed in St. Alban Church in Uense. The king was buried in the same cathedral as Albert 14 years earlier. But King Canute was transferred only nine years later in 1095 to the completely new built cathedral. At that time, the ambition for an independent Nordic arts bishopric was still in the making. It seems reasonable that no king, pope, or the Danish church at that time had any interest in honoring Albert, who could be seen as a simple, off, and a legitimizing reference to the Hamburg Bremen supremacy of the Danish church if moved to the new church. Albert was, whether he liked it or not, appointed from Hamburg Bremen. That Albert <coughs> was. Um, that Albert's way of neglecting Hamburg Bremen only a few years after Albert's own death became the Pope's policy doesn't seem to have been able to convey the sin made <clears throat> by him. As a, as a hypothesis, it can be proposed that the, king, the king's and the church transfer of St. Canute and the Episcopacy to St. Canute's Cathedral in 1095 in combination with King Canute's canonizing in 1100 and the establishment of a Danish Nordic archdiocese in 1104 should be seen as an element of a real new establishing, not, not just of the cathedral in Odense as a building, but of the bishopric and the Danish church as an institution free from German supremacy. In Odense, Denmark and Rome, Regardless of his actions and conflicts with Hamburg Bremen, Albert was likely to have been regarded as a symbol of Hamburg Bremen in a large political context. Therefore, it would have been opportune to bypass the memory of Albert when establishing the new church <coughs> and narrative in Uense without honoring historical bindings to the Holy Roman Emperor. Yeah.